We'll continue now with understanding the structure of those various places in the Beis Hamikdash that are sanctified. And we're up to Shar HaKarbon. <clears throat> so if you're on Amud Dalid, it's number Memchet. Now Rashi and Mesech the Yoma apparently didn't understand what was the purpose of the Shara Karban and why was it called such. The Bartanura says that this Shara was located in the west. And as we said over and over again, you come into the Migdash on the east. So the west is the deeper part where the Kodesh Kodoshim is. And that's where they brought the Kodesh Kodoshim, says the Bartanura, when they wanted to bring it, when they wanted to bring uh, Kachim into the Azora and they wanted to go to the northern side, they would come from the west towards the north. And they went through the Shire Hakarma. He also adds another reason here in the note. He says, Hayashar says, Somach Lulishkas Hatloim Shebebeis Hamokev. Okay. Now we have something called the Shar Noshim. Why do we need a special gate or entranceway for the Noshim? The Teferis Yisrael Amido says that even though a woman doesn't do smicha on a carbon, so she doesn't have to enter into the Azara for purposes of leaning on her carbon, but nevertheless, Tzrichos lava liros es hakravasa. There's a locha of amida b'shas hakrav. So there are two requirements. There's one requirement called smicha, and that means you have to come into the azara where they're about to take your carbon and slaughter it as part of the avoda. And then you want to be there for the amida ala karma. And that's how Allah that the, again, in a philosophical sense, you could say, based on the Ramban, that all karbonos are meant to evoke a certain <clears throat> kind of tshuva. You know, I should have been on the Mitzvah, whatever it is. But that's already philosophy. But Allah is that you have to be only on your carbon. So these two Allah, one of which does not apply to Nachim, but the other does. So the Allah that a woman has to do smicha, no. We don't have such Allah. So that would not justify why there was a special shire for the Nushim. But on the other hand, they have to be omdos ala karman. If it's their karman, they need an amida to, so to speak, watch the avod of the karma. It's going to have an impact on their souls. We'll say. And that's why they had a shire. Now, Rabbi Yossi holds that Nushim somchos. So according to Rabbi Yossi, you know, it makes 100% sense. You don't even have to ask why the women were invited into the Azara when that karma was brought. The answer is because they had to do smich. We don't pass them like Rabbi Yossi, but nevertheless, there was a shar notion. Now we get to the base of Moki. This was a massive area. He calls it a trackling gadol. It's like a lodge, you know, like almost like a palace, you know. Now, what went on in the base Moked? Obviously, the word Moked means they were burning fire. But we've already seen that there was a special Shar Hanitzots to make sure that if they needed a fire for the Mizbeach, they would get that fire from the Shar Hanitzots. So why do we need a base Moked? The base Moked, to our surprise, is not because of the Karbanos. It has to do with the Khan. Right, the Kohanim were cold, right? The whole area of the Azor was open. It was not, you know, it was it was not a se- uh, is there a verb sealing? It was not sealing. All right. My wife doesn't like when I make up words, but there was no sealing. And the floor they came in direct contact with because they were barefoot. So the Kohanim needed a place where they could heat up. They could warm their bodies. That was in the base smoking. Not only that, 
the Khanim who was who were on the Mishmar had to wake up very early in the morning to do their avoda. So in preparation, they would sleep over in the Azara overnight. Again, you have to know, as we'll soon see, whether or not the base motate is Bakodesh or Bakhol. Right now, I'm assuming it was Bakhol. We'll, we'll see there are different entrances. We'll get to that. But the point is that if the Khanim wanted to sleep over, so that early in the morning with daybreak, they would be ready for the avoda. they would sleep in the base on Moke. And it had its own heating device. So he writes, what is the base on Moke? He says, it is a trackling gadol, hoya, shoyu mavirim bo maduros esh. So they kept the fire going. They should heat them, be able to heat themselves up. So it's a stone floor, the Azura, and they were walking barefoot. They needed to heat themselves up, and they did so in the base of Moked, where there was a Maduras Ash constantly. Now there are there's a very important footnote here of a paid base. We'll get back to that in a minute. But first, he says the following. Kosley base hamoke. So we're trying to figure out what were the, what, the walls that surrounded the base hamoke. Mi bifnim hayumukafim rovadim shal evan. On the inside, these uh, walls were surrounded by layers and layers of stone. Bahavi Kimin Madregos. It was almost like it was steps. You know, there were larger stones on the bottom and narrow stones on the top. And as a result of this. Uh, lever, you know, these le levels, there was room for the Kohanim to sleep on these stones. Again, they probably brought a mattress or a cover, a blanket, whatever they did, but because they had to wake up early the next morning for the Avodah. And the Pino space Hamoed, space Hamoed on the corners, Hayu Arba Lishkos. And we're going to learn all about all these four Lishkos that were located in the base Hamoed the Lishkas Hatfloim, the Lishkas Lechem Aponim, the Lishkas Hachosmos, and the Lishkas base Hamoed. Now, let me just see if he has here. I'm just looking at the diagram. All right, right now I'm not finding it. Just give it one more second. All right, I don't want to waste your time. Let's see. He says the following. Lishka space of Moked. Chetio Hoysa Bechol Vechetio Bekodesh. So we say that there were four Lishkos in the base Hamoke, two out of the four were Bekodesh and two out of four were Bechol. So obviously we're on the borderline between the Ezra Yisrael and the Chayel. And he says the following, Beis HaMoke, it was in the middle, it straddled two sides. In the Chayel. The chel is already chol, chel chol. Um, 
Ulam Harambam, the Pirusha Mishnayis, the Chena Rash, the Midos, Kosvu, Shebeis Hamokin, Kulo Hayu Bechol. And if we're going to assume that the place where the Kohanim heated up their bodies was the same place where they slept, those Kohanim who had to wake up early the next morning, and it makes sense that it was Bechol, because Ein Yeshiva Bazar, you can't sleep in the Azar. Yesh Mishapirish, Sha'al Madrego Sa Even Hayushenu, the Yesh Apirish, a darkom Olu Al Ha Etz Tabaos, Shahu Kvuos, the Alem Yosh. So some say that it wasn't that they were sleeping on the ground stones, meaning the, the stones on the, on the ground floor that were protruding, but rather there were platforms, special platforms higher up on the Kosel. They would climb up the steps of these malos shall even till they got to the higher point, and there they would lay down and sleep on these platforms. It's the boats. Okay, so let's just very quickly, we don't have that much time to go through these four lishkos that were located in the Beis HaMoto. First of all, we have something called the Lishkas Ha Chosmos, or otherwise known as, he has here, the Lishkas Hamaftechos. Mokom Amok Ke'en Guma, so there was in the Beis HaMok a deep, a, a deep um, bar, so to speak. And Hayashobia, Shayu Godlo Amal Amo, Vitavla Shal Shayish Hoysa Munachas Alosa Mokom, Vitabas Hoysa Kvuaba, Vitavla Zumi Tsida Elion, Vishasheres Hoysa Kvuaba, Vitsida Pnimi, Shekape Aritzba, Shamaftecho Shal Azora Utluyusba, Bi Osa, Shasheres. So we know that the Azara was surrounded by a wall and the entrances to that wall had to be locked at night. So when the day ended, it was the job of the Levium to guard the, the Kodesh. And there were keys. Melchazal described at the time of the Churban of Ayis, the Novi, or we're not sure exactly, but the Kohenim, they took these keys and they threw them up to Shemayim. We don't need these keys anymore because now you're destroying the Mikdash. And God sent out a, an, a hand from Shemayim to receive these Maftechos. So somewhere up in Shemayim, they're still holding on to these Maftechos. Anyway, that's just on the side. Then is the Lishkas HaTloim, Belishke zu ha yeshisha tloim nikim mi mumim mi mumchim le carbon tum. Mi mumim le carbon tum. All right, so we have to know more about that. Anyway, that's where they kept the, the tlaim on a daily basis for the tumid. Lishkas lechem upon him. That's where they prepared the lechem upon him. Lishka sachosmos, ba shomru esachosmos, hanitonos, lemakrive karbon, lekabel tmurasam, minchos, unesachim. So for this, we have to learn really Mesefta Shkolin which deals a lot with how they divvied up whatever was valuable amongst the Kohenim, who would get what. But once they determined which Kohen would get what, he would, he, he would be granted a chosemes in singular, in plural, chosmos. Now it seems that this has a special role with regard to the Menachos and the Nesachim.
He says, in this lishka, they would keep the chosomos that would be given to those konim who were mock of the carbon. The kabal tmurasam minachos unesachim. Not too clear. I mean, who's giving what to whom? There's some sort of swap. Like the Makrive Karban get these chosomos. And what would they get for these chosomos? They would get menachos unesachim. I guess what he means is, see, I don't know about Nesachim so much, but in the case of Mincha, we, we've mentioned this many times, there are Shirayim of the Mincha that are divvied up to the Zichrei Kahuna. So I guess the Zichrei Kahuna receives these Chosomos, and that that's like a document, and they use that to receive, uh, I guess, the Shiari Mincha. Not sure enough, I don't know enough about Nesachim to evaluate that. What would the uh, what would the Cohen Kmochain Hunchu Balishka Zu Avne Mizbeach Shechilu also Malche Yovan Bakrovo Gab Mizbeach or Bonus Lashem Vodazo? Whose Kiddush is this? Uh, this already appears in the mission. The impression I get here is that the Lishka Sachosomos was a kind of a what word can I use? Let, let me, maybe you could help me find the English word that I'm looking for. There are various Kalim and Karbonos and there's the Yayin and the Shemen and all the things that we described. They have a definite mitzvah of Hakrav al Gabi Mizbeh. And we had to set up Lishkos for all these holy, sanctified, you know, Mikudoshim objects that have to be brought on the Mizbeh. But there were other objects that didn't have the status of Kodesh. They were necessary for technical reasons, and they had to be there in the Migdash. So the, again, I'm looking for that word, but the fallback, all-inclusive lichka that was used to house and store all of those objects that were auxiliary, you know, they were necessary for the function of the base on Migdash, but they weren't really part of the Avodos HaKarbon. They weren't Menachos or Nesachim, and they certainly not Zvachim. They were put into the Lishka Sachosomos. And we had Chosomos, which are, you know, like lottery tickets that you gave out, you know, that the Kohen could prove that he gets the, the Shiori Mincha. And there were Avonim from the original Mizbeach that no longer had sanctity. That's called Bo Goyim V'chilalua, that when the Yavanim entered in and they defiled the Mizbeach, it's Yatza L'chulim. That's a Chilul. But they wanted to hold on to the Yavanim, to the stones that belonged to the second temple. And even though those stones no longer had Kedusha because the Yavanim already that desecrated that condition, but nevertheless, they they wanted to hold on to it. And where would they put them again? It was not something that had Kodesh to it. So they put it in the Lua in the Lishka Sachov Summits. Hunchu Mishka Afne Mizbeach Shechilu Al Sam Malche Yovan, Ba Kroval Mizbeach Korbanus Hashem Avodazor. And last but not least, we have the Lichkas based on Moke. But no Safa and Maduros and his coral, so you must seek in Af Ba Madura Lishamen Kenegda. But there are Lichkas Zu, a Yordim, a Kornim, the base at Vila. He 
he says that in addition to the area of the base Hamoke, the general area where they were burning all these campfires, they needed a special Lishkas base Hamoke. And I, I get the impression, again, this a lot left out here in the text. It's uh, the other one in Zvachim was better, was better pedagogically fleshed out. Here it's just like Roche Prokhim. And the pictures also are not always the best. But I get the impression that there was an area of the Beis Hamoke that was accessible, very easily accessible. Then there was a mikvah on one side. He doesn't specify exactly, again, unless he means what we said before, the mikvah. I know that was the mikvah that was only for the Kohen Gadol. I doubt if that's what he means here by Lishka's base on Moke. Did we have another mikvah somewhere? Oh, we had the base at Tvila on top of Lishka's Aparva. Uh, that's also the coin goal. Did we have a general kind of mikvah? I don't know. I don't remember where we had that. I thought we had it. Anyway, so, you know, when the Kohenim went down to the mikvah, and probably even more important, when they came up for the mikvah, they needed a very warm place to warm their bodies. So near that mikvah, within the general area of the Beis Hamoke, there was a special lishkas, Beis HaMoked, where they had, again, you know, fire that was burning to warm up the bodies of the Kohenim on their way to the Beis HaTvila, or more logically, on the way back from the Beis HaTvila. That's the impression, impression I get. Okay, then, so, we'll tomorrow, we start page A. We got up to page A.